What's up, amigos? Commander Jaime here today. Today, I have a special deck profile here with Jonathan Romero. You want to say hi, Jonathan? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Awesome, man. So first off, this is uh, one of my teammates for the Spring Fest here we did in Rosemont. And what do we do, John? Uh, we got top eight. Amen. <laughs> I'll take Super it. Super excited. I know, right? And so um, what did you play for the event? Uh, what I played is Narukami um specifically dragonic vanquisher nice nice and i know that typically people still think about like eradicators but i feel like vanquisher is still a solid deck too so i'm glad that you took it to the event and you did well too with us as a whole so thank you again for also being a, uh, our teammate <laughs> yeah thank you thank you guys for having me it was definitely a lot of fun it's been quite some time since i did that i know right exactly with you know COVID and everything so we're we're beyond that point now <laughs> yeah thank god <laughs> awesome so for the viewers uh typically the structure is you know talk about like your mindset and your preparation going into the event and then if you want to start rolling into your card choices feel free uh it's really up to you at the flow that you want to go about so go ahead and jog yeah absolutely um so let it be known now it was quite nerve-wracking going into the event again it's the first time i've been in a regional in a very long time um and to be a part of a team that definitely has some good hitters uh you know shout out to shout out to you you know you you have quite the amount of feats under your belt and definitely shout out to our other teammate duke um absolutely amazing card fighters um so i was a little bit i was a little bit nervous mm -hmm. but overall um i was confident towards the end of it knowing that you know we had some really strong decks um i think they were good meta calls good seating positions and um yeah overall it went really well a lot of tough battles but really well at the end of the day awesome um, what made you go into vanquisher well two things one i've been playing this deck since release mm -hmm. um specifically the i've been playing vanquisher overall a lot longer i believe i started playing it when sparking got released oh, okay so um i essentially knew how the deck would play inside and out um so i felt more comfortable going into the vanquisher route than the eradicator route uh fair enough b i just didn't have the eradicator pieces <laughs> oh fair enough too <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, so i thought about picking it up but i felt i didn't feel um like i could pilot that as strongly as i would vanquisher gotcha so um yeah definitely with vanquisher and performed really well and it's only room for improvement afterwards. Gotcha. No, thanks for sharing that too. So if you want, we can go into your card choices or maybe like your winning image. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we can definitely go straight into the card choices. Um, so with the great three lineup, it's uh, four Dragonic Vanquishers, uh, three Dragonic Vanquisher Full Bronto, and three Jaggy Shot um, Dragoons. I feel like this is the correct ratio for uh grade threes i don't include the blitz knuckles as a part of grade threes however being a grade three definitely helps for stride turns yep um but overall i feel like this is like the correct ratio simply because of the fact that your early game isn't necessarily the greatest unless you want to sacrifice committing to full effects uh, in terms of you know binding Chaturas to get the ten uh, to get the ten k yep or things of that nature I, that's primarily the main thing your grade two game is kind of lackluster essentially until you gotcha. take grade threes mm -hmm. um, so with that I did not want to add any additional grade threes that would essentially mm -hmm. take away from shield value overall yep. that the deck has yep. Um, there's a lot of decks that just have a lot of back and forth with the grade two game. And it's essentially, if Absolutely. you can live that you in the moment you get to grade three, that's when the full potential of the deck really gets unleashed and you can go into a lot of different combos. Um, so that was the grade three lineup overall, mm -hmm. uh, very simple grade two lineup for rock climb dragoon, uh, for Chatura and for Cho'o. 
the reason why is because uh, Dragoon, or I'm sorry, Rock Climb is essentially a combo piece yep. along with your uh, your Jaggy Shots. And if you look at it ratio wise, you have seven combo or you have symbol combo, seven combo enablers mm -hmm. compared to seven combo pieces. So I felt like that ratio was really strong. So you'll have your four rock climb and you'll have your three jaggy shots that would essentially bind um, your main target, which would be Chatura and full Bronto to enable combos from there. Um, and then I decided to go with Forcho at the end of it because outside of Vanquisher himself, mm -hmm. there is nothing in the main deck that counterblasts. So oh, that's a good point. Why not take advantage of a rear guard that can a have spot removal, and b if you don't have a, uh, if your opponent doesn't have a front row, you can just counter blast to get that restand to continue your multi attacks. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So that was uh that's the grade two lineup. Very simple grade one lineup. That's where you have a little bit of flexibility. Um, but the, the room is still relatively tight overall. Uh, your main right target, you definitely want it to be Chain Bolt Dragoon, uh, just, or Chain Bolt, just because you want to be able to search out your Vanquishers uh, yep. as fast as possible. Doesn't matter which one, primarily you want Dragonic Vanquisher, um, just because it's your main right target. But Full Bronto doesn't necessarily hurt as your first ride. You just have to do your combos a little bit differently, hmm. um, but yeah, you definitely want to you definitely want to utilize on just searching out your pieces for free, um, and then at the worst case scenario, chain bolt is also another bind target, but you don't really want to bind it unless you can unless you're at that point you're just flexing on somebody, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> or like when you absolutely need to worst case scenario. Or right. absolutely when you need to. Um, I gotcha. But yeah, it's not the ideal buying target. But yeah, you definitely want to max out on four of those. Uh, the other grade ones consist of three Eradicator Demolition Dragons. Those cards are... It's one of the best grade ones I think that Narukami has ever received for V support. I agree. Um, just on hit, or, or if it boosts, or if it attacks... Um, on hit draw card and then the important part about that outside of just on hit potential um, and the draw capability is the fact that you can put it into the soul and you have selective bind targeting for the drop zone so if you're going against a uh, story you know if you're going against a deck that revolves around Storkea cards yeah. And you definitely see the Earth Up Dragon in the drop zone. If that gets there <laughs> early, you can put the you know you can put the Demolition Dragon into the soul and bind it. So that way, that's something that you don't have to worry about coming out of the yep. drop. Um, the other grade ones consist of the promo, uh, the promo order perfect guard. I can't remember the name. Rolla. It's so hard to pronounce. No, the uh, um, the the oh, promo order. PG. Yeah, oh, the Sanctitude. Order. Yeah, Sanctitude. It, some of the names are just super hard for me to pronounce. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely play one of those. It's a free perfect guard, and uh, it's a one-card guard for stride decks or you, for the G-Zone or just any grade four or three that has uh, triple drive. So, um, so one-carding guard, or, you know, one-card guarding that, that's absolutely amazing. And then the last yep. card is uh, three copies of Rolock. Uh, this card was actually a last minute choice. I was not thinking about this until you actually brought it up with your profile, uh, that mm -hmm. you showed us before going into teams. Um, I was initially playing four Demolition Dragon and two Gaibon. Uh, Gaibon essentially made anything on my board that I wanted to a Sentinel Restrict, which was oh. really powerful. But the more that I thought about it, the more I realized, again, this deck doesn't really have an early game um, or a right. two game like that. So I'd rather play defensively. And uh, Rolock definitely did help uh, the times Good that time. I did see it. Um, great two games, especially for four stacks, are just 
some of them can be absolutely insane and just having yeah. that availability just so one again you know one card pg at grade two um it definitely helps so it was definitely a good choice at the end of the day and um glad it definitely glad it worked out that way that's because here when you said the other card too it's like like the point is like it's a great card but can you even get to that turn a exactly right. exactly <laughs> um i see the shield value was nice don't get me wrong everybody loves the v shielding aspect uh mm -hmm. i think that was probably like the best time where they had guarding uh correct yeah. but if you again if you can't live to that turn then you know definitely what's the point of playing it i rather guarantee essentially play seven pgs you know up yeah. until you get to grade three um just to reassure that you are getting to grade three and you know capitalize on yep. everything that you possibly can um so going on to the trigger lineup super simple uh seven crits four of them being stride enablers the three being the paulinas uh into the soul draw card 10 and you know give your vanguard ten thousand power uh four draw triggers three of them being wyvern guard gold so you have your three perfect guards and then uh, you have your one draw trigger from uh, D series, the one that gives you ten thousand shield. I have right. Flare Veil, and then um, you have your Over Trigger and Starter. Over Trigger, best card in the deck. Every time you see it, it's the worst thing <laughs> when it happens to you. But the moment you see that thing in this deck, it is a godsend. And at that point, <laughs> nobody's touching your field or your damage for the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a really good over trigger for Dragon Empire, especially for this deck too. Yeah, it's it's really powerful. Um, it, it just it just solidifies so many combo pieces in your hand at the end of it. You know, six drive checks, no discards. Oh, yeah, that too. Uh, you know, and that's not including if you have the combo to go into uh, full Bronto, you know, to possibly get yourself an Excel 2 draw if you did decide to go the Excel 2 route. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good and question. Did you use Excel 1 or Excel 2? I went some mat primarily this deck revolves around going Excel 2 or I'm sorry, Excel 1. Mm -hmm. Um at this point I really only go into Excel 2 if I'm low on resources. The extra draw to find combo enablers or just yep. combo pieces uh it helps a lot in mm -hmm. those really tough matchups. But for the most part, since you're playing a consistent lineup, everything is either a three of or a four of, you're gonna yeah. see them relatively consistent. Um, so I primarily went force, or I'm sorry, Excel one for the majority of my matchups. There was a couple where I had to go Excel two and you know, gotcha. pray that I saw pieces. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks for uh, elaborating on that too. Did you wanna go to your strides on next? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's go into Stride Zone. Stride Zone is where the uh, the G Zone is where it gets a little tricky. So for the most part, a lot of players were just playing uh, three to four stun verse and essentially whatever else you wanted at the end of the day. Yep. Um, but then enter to hit the stun verse, and yep. that's where the flexibility, you know, really shines in this deck. Um. I had a lot of uh, backups. I had a backup to a backup, so that's the reason why you're seeing some of the one ofs. Uh, the primary one of is you definitely want to play uh, Stunverse. Uh, it helps essentially turn on all of your Thunder Strikes uh, three and higher, depending on where you, uh, depending on where you place it. Ideally, you want to capitalize on getting at least seven, so that way you could turn on voltage. Uh, but if you can get the full eight, by all means, get the full eight. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lot of players where who were playing around the stunverse. Um, some of them were just generally not calling cards when they needed them to call cards, or their drop zone wasn't filled with the four units for me to bind, but mm -hmm. their field was, or they just didn't have a combination of the two. Um, so I didn't get to utilize it how I wanted to, to its max potential. But I mean, as long as you get to Thunderstrike three, you can kind of play with the rest. 
Yeah. Um, Thunderstrike 3 essentially turns on your bulwark, which can be very important depending on when you drop that uh, for for your G guards. Yep. Uh, so I played the one Stunverse. I played the one Gilgal. Uh, this card is absolutely insane when you can pull this off. Uh, this card combos really well with the Demolition Dragon. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's on swing, you pay your cost, and then it gets 10,000 power, and you get to punch an entire board. Yep. Uh, I really miss Brawlers. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but you get to punch an entire board. That's primarily the thing. Um, you get to counter charge for every one hit that Gilgal does uh, become successful with. But the part that makes the card insane is when it's paired with the Demolition Dragon. So if your opponent is playing whatever deck and they have five units on the board, because Gilgal is punching all five units and it's boosted by the Demolition Dragon, for every one hit, you get to draw one card. Mm -hmm. So you're getting your triple drive, and then if you punch all five, you're drawing five at the end of it. So going plus eight <laughs> off of one attack, it's you know just another one of those things where you know you gain the hand and you know like we talked about um earlier you know you gain the hand and you're just not breaking through those defenses for now right yeah um so those are the important one ofs um the other one ofs that you see are the drachma and the closure dragon uh till this day i have had absolutely no reason to go into these at all <laughs> uh stun verse gilgal and it's you know essentially exterminate do a lot of work by they really themselves. do yep um but these are just very much so you know precautionary buttons that you can push if the tides aren't going the way that you want it um closer dragon is essentially a tempest bolt which nukes everybody's field everybody's drop zone and your board gets 2000 power uh for every card that's bound so it's another really good ender drachma drachma is a very strong ender um so lots of one ofs in the deck yeah um the last of the main cards that i played i played triple exterminate uh this is where the flexibility kind of comes in I never really had to go into all three exterminates. Essentially, you would flip one over for the stun first. Uh, I see. The other two, you can you can go into. Yeah. Um, if need be, it's just it, those those are a case by case scenario. But having two more, uh, you know, it definitely does help. Um, mm. we definitely played two copies of the. Uh, of the V Buster, V Buster, a really good card. Um, it's again one of those flex spots, but mm. as of right now, it's not really in the best of. You know, it's not really the best card to choose for your G Zone. Right. Uh, probably something that I would wind up changing in the future. Never had an opportunity to go into this, and I never really saw the benefits of going into it. Right. Which is having the availability for the extra drive check and the critical did yeah. sound nice for the time being you know essentially to like bait out a perfect guard or whatever the case scenario so definitely played two of those uh and then the last two oops sorry uh the last two that i played are two voltage yeah voltage is another game ender um at GB3, flip a copy of itself. You don't care about the on-hit effect for this thing at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that you care about is the GB3 and your entire front row gets plus 3,000 power for every card that your opponent has bound. Um, yep. If anything, I would wind up actually taking the voltages out or uh, the V-Busters out and just putting in two more copies of voltage. It's just that strong of a card. Always has, always will. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and, definitely great card. Yeah, I was gonna say depending on the the matchup, this might get bigger than exterminate, and versus exterminate in an Excel matchup, that might be better. So you have oh, to absolutely. If you see the Excel matchup, um, and if it's one of those matchups where you know they're trying to spam Excel markers and you know get the Excel two markers to make up for the for the cost of you know kind of like dumping your hand to you know yep. get to that point, um. 
Exterminate is an absolutely wonderful card if they have the front row rear guards open. Yeah. Um, but then once you have, once you go into your stun first turn to essentially nuke that front row. Yep. Um, voltage just kind of comes in and sweeps up everything else that Exterminate can't. Yeah, you know, just, fair enough. Just gain a lot of power for free and just swing for the fences that's all you really need to (laughs) do and the best thing about the voltage combo is that it's a continuous skill Mm -hmm. so you can go you can still go into your combo pieces and if you bind a uh multiple chaturas chaturas are going to get their ten thousand plus if you put them on the marker they're going to get the mark the ten thousand from the marker Mm -hmm. and the continuous ability from voltage so they're just going to skyrocket in terms of power Mm -hmm. and it's just those are just the turns that are really hard to guard um so that wraps up for the main g zone units uh the tricky thing about this deck for me was going into the uh the g guardians okay um i thought that counteract dragon was going to be i thought it was going to perform a lot better Mm -hmm. and it didn't there was a lot of really smart players that were playing around the counteract dragon when i did drop it Mm -hmm. um so i didn't get the full potential of the plus twenty thousand shield there was a lot of players that just gave up maybe one card and it just forced me to drop another 15k or another 20k because the attacks are just that strong um but I decided I thought this card was going to be a lot stronger than what it was. So I wanted to uh, utilize that the most since it was uh, probably the most free card. Out yeah, of that's the true. G Guardians. And it kind of just puts your opponent in a bind. Um, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. Definitely no pun intended. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it kind of puts them in that situation. It's like, mm, do I want to give up these units? Do I not want to give up these units? And then there was just a lot of people who were like, yeah, you can have them. I, I don't need them. So, you know, it was gotcha. kind of, it was kind of, it underperformed, but it was still good when I needed it. Yeah. Um, You know, it got me to at least some of the threshold that I needed to guard. Yeah. Um, So three counteract, and then I played the one bulwark. Um bulwark did not come up as much as i thought it would be again this was another one of those cards that really underperformed just because there were so many people who were playing around the stun verse yeah i could not get to eight in a couple of games mm-hmm. and it really did hurt yeah because i really wanted to nuke two rear guards instead of the one just so I didn't have to worry about them either restanding or yeah. bouncing back to hand or going into soul, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, so just having that, um, just having that threshold, you know, getting up to the eight, it was a, it was a strong challenge. Um, but the one time that I did drop the bulwark, it definitely came in handy. <laughs> nice. It was one of those um, moments like, yes. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those moments where I needed it. It performed well and hey, that's what matters. Yeah. Uh, now the MVP that I'm really upset that I did not play more of was definitely Impede. Mm-hmm. Uh, through testing, uh, I've been testing against a lot of decks that have uh, token generation, which inherently makes Impede the worst uh, G guard in your G zone. Um. In those situations where they have your opponent has tokens, they're gonna choose the tokens over actual rear guards any day of the week because they can just respam the tokens with little to no cost. True, makes sense. Um, I saw no token generators at all. <laughs> yeah, so you didn't face Neo Nectar really. <laughs> I didn't fight Neo Nectar. I didn't fight anything Storkea that actually required to generate tokens. Um, there was no Nubatama tokens, uh, right. no Cecilia's, again, no Katrina's. I didn't fight anything of that nature. 
Mm -hmm. So the one time, there was multiple times where I needed more than one impede, and this regional was definitely it. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of the times, I don't really need more than one impede because a lot of people just generate tokens. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, I definitely would recommend just playing more than one impede. Two is a very strong number for it, and uh, probably drop counteract down to two. I can see that. And, you know, playing a second bulwark in case you do get to that, uh, the thunder strike mm. eight. Mm -hmm. So that way you could just keep nuking rear guards and just not have a problem with it. Yep, yep. Sounds good. Awesome. Yeah, so any any other closing thoughts or, or suggestions you want to? talk about uh, before we wrap up yeah absolutely um so for the people who do want to play this deck um just know your g zone does have does have a lot of flexibility you don't have to go this route um with you know my choices again you know i definitely would give you more recommendations um there's other there's stronger options just after reviewing you know you can definitely play two bulwarks two impedes you can play six g guardians in total if you really want to you don't necessarily have to play the closure dragon um so just keep in mind that you do have a lot of options for your g zone and just mm -hmm. know that if you are playing against a rush deck it is okay you don't have to you know you don't have to stress about it you will have more than enough guard, um, especially with the Rolox, uh, Rolox in there. Uh, if you are playing this in premium, definitely recommend to play the Rolox because it does help your grade two game tremendously. Um, but outside of that, future revisions, now you know future revisions are coming down the line. You know, just waiting for more support to get released. That'll help benefit this deck. Um, Definitely shout out to you and Duke for, you know, keeping me level headed throughout the tournament. It was a lot of fun. And it was it was fun. You know, it was definitely a great time and, you know, great teammates overall. Oh, I appreciate that. What's it called? Um, do you want to highlight your like any key matchups or anything that stood out to you for the event? So I have two. Well, sure. one of them being a shout out, uh, definitely sure. to our um, to our top eight opponents. Um, not gonna lie, the moment I saw Great Nature, I thought I was gonna flood this guy. Um, mm. You know, Great uh, Great Nature for me, wonderful matchup. It's a breeze, just because you know Great Nature pretty much still resolve you know revolves around the I need to give my rear guards this effect. Yep. And, you know, when they die at the end of the turn, I'll go ahead and proc those effects, which in my head, I thought that essentially translated to, okay, he's going to have open front row rear guards and I'm just going to go ahead and exterminate him out the gate. Fair um, enough. That was not the case at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the man knew what he was doing with the deck inside and out. It was absolutely amazing games. Um, I got steamrolled in top eight. Can't really do anything about that. But um, he was a very tough competitor. So definitely shout out. Uh, I had definitely learned a lot from that one. And then um, I believe it was our round three opponent. I fought a reindeer. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, fought... Yep. That was a lot of fun. Um, I got reindeer twice. And mm -hmm. uh, on the second one, I six damage healed out of it. Whew. And uh, had enough to guard the rear guard that had two force markers on it. Yep. And um, yeah, final turn was just drawing for turn, activating Dragonic Vanquisher's effect. Didn't have anything to stride, didn't have anything to call. Uh, one card in hand, activate the effect, bind a card from my hand, swing for the fences, and I prayed that the attacks went through, and fortunately they did. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, they just, you know, the, the 10k from Vanquisher's continuous effects uh, pushed through. And they weren't super good threshold numbers, but they were enough to solidify the win. So gotcha. I'll, I'll wow. definitely take it. Yeah, right. it, was, it was a tough matchup. <laughs> That's intense, just hearing about it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was... I survived the first one. I was like... You know, I've never fought Reindeer before. I have no idea how that actually went through. Gotcha. Um, and just... Living the first one, I was like, oh, okay. He's not going to have enough resources for a second one. 
No, he had enough resources for a second one to get it consistently, but um, I miraculous, you know, the miracle heal, you know, happens to happens to everybody. Yeah, it happens, but it could be in your favor too. In this case, it was so that worked out. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So, great matchups overall. Fun day. Awesome. I was gonna say, do you have any last minute shout outs, and we'll be done. Um. You know, again, shout out to you guys for giving me the opportunity. Uh, shout out to all of the people who I, you know, played against in the tournament. I don't know your names. My apologies. But, you know, you guys definitely gave me, um, you know, different learning experiences just to help better and, you know, try to understand matchups and, you know, keep the deck, keep the deck alive and, you know, figuring out what to do going forward. Awesome. Thanks again, Jonathan. I appreciate you. And uh, shout out to our other teammate, Duke Carfi as well. Um, I'm sure he's doing his deck profile soon. So once that's out, I'll also share it on community posts so people can check his deck profile out. And then eventually I'll also publish mine as well. So without further ado, on to the next one, amigos.